Hello everybody and welcome back to Dead Overflow. My name is Dead Overflow and today we're going to be talking about how to actually get started with cybersecurity in 2026. Now I know it's not actually 2026 yet, but don't worry about it. You understand that. Don't worry about it. Uh, as you can see, I'm still kind of getting used to this face reveal thing. So don't mind the microphone still being in my face because I kind of haven't figured things out yet, but don't worry about it. Today, we're going to be actually talking about a roadmap that will take you from being a beginner to somewhat good at hacking. But if you actually take this seriously, because I don't want you lazy guys to just kind of watch this video and be like, nah, it ain't for me because nothing in this life can be acquired through laying down and not doing actually what you're supposed to be doing. Same with hacking. So if you want to actually be good at it, then you're going to have to put in some time, like put some time aside from gaming. I know. I'm kind of addicted to CS2 myself, but I'm already a hacker and you guys aren't. I assume you aren't, but you want to become. That's why you're here. Anyways, if you're new here, please subscribe, like this video, and also check out my course, which is in the description down below. It kind of teaches you everything about hacking you that you kind of need. So yeah, links both for my platform, Aveno, and for the course are in the description. Now let's go with the first step. First step, obviously, is learning programming okay hold on i know that sounds scary i know it sounds super scary but trust me it's not honestly my first programming language is c plus plus and i didn't even know how to properly like turn on a computer like okay that's maybe a bit too you know and forget about it but it was definitely hard for me to learn c plus plus but for you learning python with ai era you have all of these tools in front of you Learning Python or learning any programming language would be actually easy as hell. So let me show you. On my screen right now, we have the Python downloads page. So you go to downloads and, you know, kind of download the latest version, which is 3.13.7. Uh, uh, kind of download it and kind of get familiar with it. There are amazing platforms and amazing schools that, that, that are actually going to teach you AI. Uh, they're going to teach you Python, sorry. But what I recommend is just go with ChatGPT. Literally, just go with ChatGPT. You, you don't actually have to go with ChatGPT, but it's definitely going to be the easiest way of learning this programming language because ChatGPT kind of can give you a, a whole lot of explanations that honestly were not available to me or to any of other programmers or hackers out there. And just trust me, every single hacker, I mean, every single hacker has to know a little bit of programming. That's just how it is. Even if it helps to just kind of complete repetitive tasks, it's still good. But in this scenario, in this context of web hacking, by the way, web hacking, that's what we're talking about. It's absolutely mandatory. So after you learn Python, after you're kind of familiar with what Python is, how it works, and how you actually can code with the syntax of Python, I recommend you move on to the second step, which is learning Flask. Now, Flask is a module within Python. Don't make these things kind of confuse you. It is just a module within Python that kind of allows you to do many interesting things like hosting your own web application on your local host or maybe on the LAN. So anybody who is connected to your internet can kind of connect. And also making worldwide web applications like literally having everybody kind of get access to your web application if you host it. And that's kind of easy. I might actually make a tutorial on how to host your web applications. But this is something very interesting because once you learn this, once you learn Flask and once you build your own web application, like for example, in, on the screen right now, you know Flask and in this tutorial, we'll be building the, uh, as you can see, the note taking Flask thing, also login. And once you understand the workflow of all of this, you'll understand where vulnerabilities potentially arise and once you know how to build a website you'll definitely know how to destroy one that's just how it is so after you're familiar with flask after you understand how flask works and how web applications work and how all of this other stuff works uh, i recommend you go to the second phase which is after you complete programming actually learning hacking and learning hacking can definitely be interesting if you know Fortswigger. Fortswigger actually is a website that helped me become who I am today in terms of web like, security research and every every other aspect of hacking. It's just been actually an amazing platform for me as well. But I'll show you a few things that you actually kind of need to understand before you even dive into this. You can go to uh, research to read their own blog posts about vulnerabilities, which is kind of crazy because sometimes it inspires me to make videos. But in the academy, you can actually find a lot of different learning materials and labs. Most importantly, labs, but learning materials are also good because you can see webcast deception, 
web LLM attacks. Oh, that's interesting. API testing. If you know how to build web applications, you definitely know what, what an API is. No SQL injection. Same. SQL injection. Same thing. Cross-site scripting. If you know how to build a website, you definitely know what XSS is. CSRF as well. Because once you're building this note-taking app, you have to protect it against CSRF, right? Because you, you can be attacked. But this way, you actually understand what CSRF is and also know how to protect against it. So now you have a visual picture in your head of how actually other websites might have implemented that. XXE or external entities, that's kind of complex. Maybe if you are if you know EXML, then that's probably something to look into. But trust me, after you complete the, la after you complete the learning materials, after you figure everything out, just I recommend the old-fashioned way. Don't, don't, don't just bother like... Don't overwhelm yourself with knowledge in a one day. Just take a pen. I don't even know. Have one here. Just take a pen and a piece of paper and write everything down. Write your progress down. Take some notes. Uh, similar to the old-fashioned school learning. Just just do that. And I, recommend, I definitely reckon you can be the best hacker out of your friend group. Or even sometimes in the world. Because you never know. It's just not actually even talent. It's just how hard you try. And you basically have to try harder than others. And that's what we're actually going to be getting into the third step. But before we actually get into there, I have to show you the all contents and then all labs. And labs allow you to basically hack websites that are deliberately made vulnerable. So you can kind of hack them. You know, I don't want to like confuse you with further stuff if you're basically a beginner. But this is a website, for example, SQL injection vulnerability. And once you click this access the lab, it will create a website for you that is actually deliberately vulnerable. So you can kind of go on that website, figure out the vulnerability, exploit the vulnerability so you can kind of get, you know, the touches of real world exploitation and real world hacking, because that's just how it is. Uh, there is no fancy terminals and all of that stuff. It, this is basically what hacking is and what hacking looks like. And after you've done that, we go through the third step, which is registering on HackerOne or BugCrowd. It really is a preference of yours, uh, honestly. Uh, I prefer BugCrowd because they're actually kind of better, but I don't know, honestly, it's just what you choose. But anyways, uh, HackerOne. So once you register in HackerOne, I recommend you go to the activity and actually read the reports from other people. For example, there was a vulnerability on GitHub. I don't actually think we can read it because this was a high severity and it was rewarded 10,000. So if you knew hacking and if you were actually working at the right place, which you should be at if you know how to build websites, you could have definitely found this vulnerability and got yourself 10 grand, uh, including me, but I'm too busy making videos for you guys, of course. I'm just kidding, of course. So so you can actually kind of see, go through the 25,000 of these different reports, but you can also filter them up by, for example, the minimum reward, which we can put to be 100. And now you actually get the only, the only issue is not actually stupid stuff. And there's GitLab, account takeover, we have password reset without user interactions and this is something i covered already on my channel in a short actually where the attacker supplied two email addresses and both of them received a reset link for the first one like victim actually received its reset link and the attacker received the victim's reset link because two of the emails were supplied and again how did this person know this could be actually happening well he probably saw it from the hackstrix website but maybe just maybe Maybe the person who got it on the Hackstrix website actually learned new programming and knew how websites work and what can actually go wrong. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. It is actually very simple and very easy, just a like, very simple thing to do. And by the way, this vulnerability was worth 35 grand. Holy moly, that's a lot. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. It's actually very, and I mean very simple to learn hacking. Even if you just know what you're doing, which you should be doing, because you know you got access to AI, I think you should be fine. Thank you so much for watching this little video I made for you. Uh, stay safe, stay responsible, and as always, peace.